Uh, we were cousins. Yes. I, I was just a little older than he. Yes, yes. And uh, when he ordered the murder of these babies, two years old and under, I had to flee. Yes. Not just Jesus. Joseph and Mary took him and they ran to Egypt. My mother Elizabeth took me and went to the wilderness of Judea. There I remained until the Holy Ghost of heaven said, Now, John, it is time. Prepare the way. Oh, this king. Oh, what a king. Uh, my father, Zechariah. Could you imagine waiting all your life for the trip to go into the place of the temple to burn incense on the altar? Once in a lifetime. And while he's there, Gabriel the angel shows up. And he says, Zechariah, Zechariah, you and your wife Elizabeth shall have a baby boy, and you shall call his name John. <laughs> uh, my father Zechariah says, this cannot be. We are old. It's impossible. Gabriel said, because of your doubt, you shall not be able to speak. And he was speechless for almost a year. Yes, yes. And then came the time for me to be born. I was born, and they were celebrating my family. Friends were there. And so naturally, they were inquisitive. Elizabeth, oh, what shall you name him? Oh, we shall call his name John. John? John. There's no Johns in your family. Mm -hmm. They looked to Zechariah and said, oh, what say ye? He, he could not speak. So he began to write, his name shall be called John. And as soon as he confirmed that, the Holy Spirit of heaven opened his mouth. And he said, my boy shall be called John. And he shall prepare the way for the Lord. There will be rivers flowing in desert places. All the crooked places will be made straight for this king. Oh. I saw him in a different light. I saw him coming. This king, when he comes, Rome will pay. Oh, I preach with such vigor this message of repentance. The Pharisees and scribes, you know, religious people, maybe you know some. <laughs> yes, the pointers of the fingers. Yeah, keepers of the law, watchers over you. I've met a few of those myself, yes. And they came and said, John, would you baptize us? And I said, if you bring forth meat unto repentance, give me some evidence you're changed. <laughs> the Sadducees could not. They did not believe in the resurrection. This is why they were so sad, you see. <laughs> hey, people have a problem when they don't understand resurrection power. Yes, yes, yes. The Pharisees would not change. Why? Because they were right. Yeah, yeah. Foolish men, thinking they could come before a holy God, appearing to be righteous, but inside, full of dead men's bones. Jesus would let them know. This Jesus. We played together as children. I would see him at the feasts. We did not get to spend a lot of t a time as we grew older together, for I was waiting my time in the wilderness of Judea. Yes, yes. This Jesus, I, I remember. I remember when he was coming to be baptized of me. I saw him, and I told the people, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. His fan is in his hand. He's thoroughly going to purge the floor. Oh, what I was telling them, he had a winnowing fork, like the farmer who would take the winnowing shovel or the fork and toss the wheat in the air, and the wind would blow the chaff away. I thought, you're going to pay. He is here. Oh, Rome, oh, cruel. Cruel he is. Cruel nation, causing us to suffer so. And I thought, 
Now is our time. Behold him. We shall be a great nation again. But it didn't happen like I thought. I told them, not only would he fan the floor and thoroughly purge it, but the ax would be laid at the root of the tree. Little did I realize the root he was speaking of was not Rome, but our hearts. You see, he came to get to the heart of the problem. I was so disappointed. I was so angry. Jehovah, how could this be? This is not, this is not the wild man I thought. You see, people came from all over to see this reed shaken in the wind. Antipas, Herod Antipas was afraid of me, a lowly evangelist. <laughs> but he had reason to be, because I was on a mission from heaven to share this Jesus. Jesus came to change. He came to set the captive free. But, but it was a strange thing. He had such compassion. He looked at people through eyes of compassion. He, he was not this wild man. No, he was gentle. Children flocked to him. I thought, we're in trouble now. Wow. Some of you may, may feel this way too. I'm preparing for this meeting with you at, from my prison cell, as you could see. I, I heard you singing. Oh, it was wonderful. I was at a distance from you, but I could hear you, and I could feel the Holy Ghost of heaven burning. Uh, it's the same way that day I baptized him. Huh. Uh, I must need be baptized of you, Master. He said, John, we must fulfill our righteousness. He knew something. You see, he was getting ready to begin his earthly ministry. As the priest, he knew there would be a ceremonial washing and a ceremonial anointing. What happened that day? Now, I, I, it was not worthy to unloose the shoes. Who am I that he would ask of me to baptize him? But I did. I baptized him, and oh, that day, heaven opened. The Holy Ghost of heaven came down as a dove and lit upon him. The voice of God shook the earth and said, This is my beloved Son and whom I am well pleased. And then he was gone for 40 days in the wilderness preparing for this earthly ministry. I continued to preach. I continued to share. Then, then I wound up in trouble. Yeah, sometimes that happens, Pastor. You preach and you can, yes, wind up in trouble. Yes, not, not as bad as mine, I hope. I hope. You, you can see, I have a window. Yes, yes. And, and some of my disciples would speak to me through this window. And I said, I need you to go see him, the one they called Jesus, and ask him, are you him, or do we look for another? Oh, my friends, my friends, listen. You probably look at me and judge me. How could you doubt John? How could you doubt if this was him? There were many people claiming to be this Messiah, Jesus, that day. As they are in your day, I, I know. Yes, yes. But this was the thing for me. Because his kingdom did not come as I thought, I was a little concerned. It set me back a little bit. So I sent my disciples. And when they came back to me, he had told them, you tell him. You go show him what you've seen or what you've heard. Blinded eyes are open. The lame are made to walk. Oh, then I knew it was him because the prophet Isaiah said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this was he who would come and preach this gospel to the meek. Oh, he would open the prison doors to those who were bound. He would cause the lame to walk. He would bring life. So I did not doubt anymore. I knew this was the Jesus. Some of you in your life, you're struggling tonight. There may be doubters in this house. You doubt if he could forgive you. 
You doubt if he can help you. You doubt if he could save you. You doubt if he can set you free. Oh, I know, I know. I am in chains. I'm bound here in this prison. And I am in behind bars. But bars of bone hold my soul. Some of you are in prison. Maybe it's an emotional prison. Maybe it's a mental prison. Yes. Walls. Chains. I chose to come to you tonight in this way to let you know. For the church to be the truth today. Uh, same message. Different package. Oh, yes, yes. Changed our church. Yes, yes. The church at Somerville. Huh. Changed them. Why? Because people are saying, now I understand. I never knew this, John, like this. I never understood Moses. I never realized Lazarus was such a happy man. Can you imagine that? Would you not be happy if you were raised from the dead? <laughs> Some of you need to act like it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my. From this prison of Magennis, I learned something. I learned his kingdom, as he would say, was not outward, but is within you. I learned that his kingdom would be setting up a throne in your heart. He would reign as king of kings and lord of lords over your heart. Different, different than what I ever thought. And I also come to learn something too. This wilderness of Judea, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Jeremiah, and the prophet Hosea spoke of this same wilderness of Judea. And you know what they said? They said it would be a new beginning, a place of new beginning. For me, this is just a place of new beginning. Uh, this will not be my end. So you see, when you look at me and you say, John, poor John. You, you know what I'm saying, John. Poor John. Sometimes things happen in our lives and people say, poor John. Or poor Gary or Mike, whoever. But we are not to be pitied in this day we are living in. As the body of Christ, we must share this gospel. We must let people know. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive and he is well. Or oh, soon, you know my demise, you know my demise. Soon my head will be taken from my shoulders. Yes, they're coming shortly. I hope you're not here for the execution. I hope you're here for the message. And my, as I share my last will and testament with you from this black fortress of Machetus, I need you to understand this place of new beginnings. You see, I, I will know shortly, oh, when, when I die and I am carried to Abraham's bosom in paradise, he shall die, this one Jesus, taking the sin of the world upon him. And for three days, he shall preach to the souls in prison there. And guess what? I will be among those. I will have my head then. Yes, yes, yes. And he will share this message, and he will empty this chasm of paradise. Set us free. Some of you tonight need to be set free. Some of you tonight need to say, God, you see my heart. Uh, this is not working like I thought it would work. I said I'm saved. Now I have problems. Uh, yeah, well, welcome to my world. <laughs> yes, it's not an easy thing. Oh, but I am so thankful that this Jesus is a faithful God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I remember when I baptized him, the water was cold, but there was a fire burning inside of me. The same fire I feel stirring in my spirit as I stand before this congregation tonight to share this truth, to know this Jesus. What an awesome God we serve. He came to set the captive free. Have you been set free? Anyone over here? Have you been set free? Oh, hallelujah. Well, what about you? My, we keep getting a few. How about you? Yeah. Uh, they're on the right side. <laughs> what about you folks? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in the balcony that has been set free from the prison? Yes, yes. To this we ought to say, to God be the glory. Can you help me? To God. Be the glory. This is a time. This is a message. 
It is very important today. Young people need to grasp this and understand. It's not just a storybook character. Not someone we read about in history. No, John was real. Jesus is real. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is important to declare his name today. Back in that day, they did not want us to declare his name either. We need to declare his name. For in no other name is salvation given than in the name of Jesus. Oh, you can call him Lord, yeah, Master, Savior. But there are other lords and masters and saviors for some people. But there's only Jesus for us. Yes, yes, it's Jesus. Oh, I hope tonight that you'll give ear to this lowly evangelist. And hear the words I speak to you. For time is drawing near. Yes, yes. The end is drawing near. Yes. He's coming. He's coming. Are you ready? Yes, they're here to take me away now. Am I sad? No, no. I'll lay my head on that chopping block, and I will gladly die for my king. For then my spirit shall be set free. And I shall behold him. <laughs> Where will you spend eternity? Uh, when the death angel comes for you, will you be carried away in the presence of the Lord to be with him? Or will you be lost eternally and wind up in the fire from this black fortress of Machetis? I share with you my heart. Don't have a preconceived idea of who can and cannot be saved, who God can and cannot touch, who God can and whom God can and cannot set free. He is God and God alone. I believe tonight if we will allow him, in this altar, deliverance will take place for some. In this altar, joy will be restored. Hallelujah. In this altar, marriages can be reunited. Why? Because he is our Redeemer. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. Thank you for giving me your attention. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. Repent. I want to thank Pastor Gary for trusting me, for allowing me to come before you like this. Um, the new year has brought a stirring in my spirit. And uh, there is a reawakening taking place. In my heart, in my life, I have beheld him in a greater way than I ever have before. The word of God has come alive in me as it never has before. And I have been sharing every first Sunday I share a character like this. Pastors, you want to try it. You'd be surprised. We are busting at the seams because people want to come and see what's going to happen next. And I'm very humbled. And before I come and stand before them or before you, I say, God, please let me let them know it's not about the character. It's not about the pastor. Christ is the center of the message. And I have done my best to do that, to point you to this Christ tonight, the one who has laid the axe at the root of the tree, the one who wants to get to the source of the problem, as we shared last night, the one who wants us to pass the salt and know that we have been healed, delivered, and set free. Oh, my heart stirs within me. Body of Christ, there's no greater time to be alive than 2013. There's no greater time in history for us to share as the body of Christ and the church of God as it is now. People are hungry. People are searching. They're longing to find this true Jesus. I have them coming from everywhere, from different churches, religions, backgrounds. And they say, we don't feel what we feel here. We don't hear. You see, Brother Ronnie, people still want to hear the truth. And don't, don't kid yourself and think, oh, no, 
Church is old fashioned. No, people still want to hear you. Bring it down and preach it and share the word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Some may look a little different tonight to you, but I hope you'll never look at John the same way ever again. You see, he was not unlike a lot of us. His faith was tested. Yes. Things didn't happen like he thought they should. But you see, when you trust God, when you give it all to him, he makes sense of things. I was praying for some folks last night in this altar, and they're struggling with things in their life. They're struggling with issues, or, or they're, they're standing in the stead of someone else who is struggling. And I want to tell you tonight, this is your opportunity. They say the first five years of a child's life is when they are, their character is formed. Uh, my daughter and, and son-in-law, they, they have formed and fashioned our grandson, three and a half years old, doing a very good job of that. And I am proud of him so much. I'm grateful. Little Emmy has come along now. What happens is if you could think of an airplane and the back part of the airplane like a jet being huge and it narrows down when it comes to the very point of the front of the plane. Back here for the first five years of their lives, there's a filtering system and everything's poured in. I mean, they're sucking everything up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Then it starts narrowing down. Yeah. They don't take in as much. Then there's a little part where the cabin comes in there where the, the bubble, where the pilot sits. And there's a time in their young adulthood, they start filtering things again. But it's all based upon the premise of what they've learned back here. And then it comes down as they're nearing the end of their life. I, I sit in my office and people come in and I counsel with them. And I've seen grown men and women who are challenged with things from their childhood. And they'll answer you from their childhood. They'll speak to you about things that happened when they were 12 or when they were 7. And you could see it. When, the way they describe it, you could see the child rising up within them. Jesus is the only one that can clean that filter up. He's the only one that can take and change that imprint. I found out if anything I know at 53 years young, I know this. We can choose the movie that we play in our heads. Every one of us. And I choose to play the movie I'm redeemed by love divine. I've been delivered. I've been set free. I will not let the movie of doubt filter through my mind. I will not let a movie of despair. I will not let the devil. You see, here, kids, you got to catch this. This is so important for you tonight. Because here's what's happening. When you come into this world, you're asking all kinds of questions. And you want your identity. Who, who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? The Word of God is very explicit when it speaks to us about giving them Jesus. We give them the Word, and we introduce them to the Lord Jesus Christ, and He answers that question. He lets us know who we are, why we're here, and where we're going. So that's why they're trying to stamp Him out. That's why they want us to talk to you about Jesus, pray about Jesus, because Jesus can change your life. Young man, one day, one day, if God so chooses, you may be standing up here. You may be in character. You may be sharing the word of God. What you have to do is be willing. God, in my life, be glorified. Take my life and use it for your glory, God. Because it's not about me. It's about you. You receive that, young man. You receive that. Listen, I believe God's got a word for this district, and I believe it is, it's time for us to be salt. It's time for us to be truth. It's time for us to be light. Don't back away. Don't shy away. Your family needs you. Oh, the people you work with need you. And this is the day he's given us to stand before you. I want the praise team to come and get ready. You can bring the lights up in the house if you want to now. And uh, I want to give this altar a call because I feel like this is an opportunity for us. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, from the balcony to the floor, I want to tell you something. He's here, and he wants to save you. He wants to set you free. If you're battling, if you're struggling, if you feel like you're in the black fortress of Maquettis, if you're in a, a prison God wants to set you free. If you're at a place of wondering what in the world's going on in my life, let me tell you quickly, when two things happen when you're being sifted. Two people are involved in that sifting process. Remember when, when Jesus in Luke's gospel said, Simon, Simon, Luke 22, verses 31, 32, Simon, Simon. Simon means weak, shaky, unstable. Unstable one? Satan has desired to have you, and he may sift you as wheat. God lets him sift us. But here's the reason Satan sifts you, and he sifts me. 
is he wants to bring up the junk to the surface if there's anything there. And if there's not, he'll dredge up something from your past, which isn't there if you're saved because it's under the blood. But you see the reason he sifts you, Satan wants to bring accusations against you, the accuser of the brethren. He wants you to live a life of condemnation and shame. Yeah. He wants to bring you under such dis duress in your life. But God allows us to be sifted. He sifts us to purify us, to get the junk out, to let us be able to see what comes to the surface. Holy Spirit of God, Holy Ghost of heaven, power of the Lord Jesus Christ, blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I love this. This is amazing to me. But this is what really happens when you get saved. When the enemy looks at you to try to point out your sin, he can't find the sin because the Savior's there. And when he looks at you, he sees the Savior. The Savior's there. Yeah, hallelujah. And he's covered you. My life is hid in Christ Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Some of you in the altar last night begging God and weeping before God, begging God. What you need to say, God, let me change the movie in my head. Let me believe who I am in you, God. Lord, let me walk as a child of God. Let me live not in my past, not by the things that used to bind me, for my spirit is free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joy of the Lord needs to be restored in the body of Christ. We don't laugh enough. Amen. Amen. We don't rejoice enough. Praise God. It did me good to hear you. Man, when you started opening the service tonight, praying, I, I looked at the clock and I thought, Lord Jesus, they're having church because they went past 10 minutes praying. You don't see that much anymore. We take 20 minutes for prayer requests and pray three and act, act like something's supposed to happen. Give, give me a break. You're kidding me. Wow. God wants to do something great in this church. He wants to do great, something great in your life. Listen to me. We've been acquainted with a lot of deaths at our church recently. A lot of folks going on to be with the Lord. The last part of 2012 and the first part of 2013, I've had a lot of funerals. A lot of saints going on to be with God. Not unlike you here in this district. How many churches in this district have, have experienced death in some way in the last few months? Anybody? Yes, yes. Let me tell you something real quick. For you that have lost a loved one, let me tell you, this is, this is important. I heard uh, my wife, she was doing a study, and I uh, read this and I heard Beth Moore make mention of this. It's powerful. She knelt before the Lord when she had lost a loved one, and she said, God, I give you my grief. I give you my grief because you are my burden bearer. I give you my grief because you are my comforter. I give you my grief lest Satan should grab it first and cause me to become bitter and upset at you. I surrender my grief to you because you give the all of joy. Amen. Praise God. And the garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness and for that mourning. You turn my mourning into laughter. So God, I give my, listen to me. If you allow the enemy over your mom or your dad or your aunt or uncle, grandparents, children that have died and gone on to be with the Lord, if you allow the enemy, he will sap your joy from you Bind your spirit and you'll be grieved. And you'll walk into the church and out. Not unlike some of the religious people John was talking about showing up. But nothing's there. Empty. Yet claiming, oh God, you are my life. Uh, again, I reflect on the song you sang last night, girl. My goodness. It talked about, Lord, I, I want to sing about you, God. Uh, I don't mind testifying about you, God. But I need you to do something. Change me. Y'all going to sing hallelujah. My great spirit of worship tonight prepared your hearts for such a time as this. Again, thank you for coming. I trust and pray tonight. Stirred your spirit. You say, oh God, give me the passion John had to tell the truth.